Hello, everyone. Welcome to Age of Sigmar Stormground. I'm Jeff Lydell, CEO of Gasket Games, and I'm joined by our design director, Ian Christie. In this video, we'll be showcasing gameplay from one of Stormground's replayable roguelike campaigns, and talking you through some of the various tactical options available to you thanks to our rich gameplay and customization systems. Before jumping in, Age of Sigmar Stormground is a deep and dynamic turn-based strategy game based on Games Workshop's iconic IP, where every piece at your command can be used in a variety of ways in fast-paced, decisive matches. Stormground allows you to control three distinct armies, the Stormcast Eternals, Nighthaunt, and Maggotkin, with completely different units, skill sets, and story. Today we play the Stormcast Eternals against the Nighthaunt with the help of Ian. So without further ado, let's battle. Okay, so this is a mission that's much later into our campaign uh, in, the first, in the first difficulty level. This is like one of the sixth missions that you'd be fighting in a given run, and the enemies are a lot more challenging. Uh, we've got some level twos mixed in there. Our top levels are level three, so um, there's a lot of higher level troops for me to contend with. It's something I need to be very careful about. On top of that, my warband is a little worse for wear. I've taken some losses and I haven't been able to pick up all the equipment that I'd like to on this run. Uh, and as a result, uh, we aren't at full fighting strength. So I'm gonna have to do everything I can to make my way through these waves with Freya, uh, try and keep her alive and protect the troops that I do have available uh, and have a chance at surviving these turns. Um, it's not all bad. Uh, I do have a large number of upgrades that are available to me. Uh, I've got a Spirit Storm ability that's been equipped to my Knight Encanter. I have several upgrades on the Castigator Squad that get, makes them st much stronger at, at range combat. And we've got a Hunter Squad out with a number of useful skills attached to it. Hunters have a decent melee attack. They don't have the best survivability though, so I'm going to have to be very careful with them. There's a couple things to contend with on the field. We have some useful hills. There are some site blockers uh, or movement blockers that are going to prevent me from being able to uh, path through these different areas. And then finally, we have these, these uh, hazards. These are insta-kill hazards. Anything that gets knocked into these, these hexes is going to be killed right away. And that's great information for... Uh, or that's a great ability to be able to use against the the enemy units uh, but it's also something that can be used against you in the case of several of these troops here uh, there are some knockback skills sitting on these chain rasps it's something that we need to be very careful about with how they position and how we are positioned all right with that let's get started These chain chain ghasts up here that are twirling their gas flails, they are going to attack this position in the next turn. And I need to be very careful with that because if I stay here, that attack's going to hit me and that delayed attack is stronger than the, the standard attack. So I need to move. I also need to contend with this Dreadblade Harrows who's on the field. Uh, because I haven't, it's the early turns, I haven't earned much ether yet. Ether is created from unspent power. Because I didn't spend my three power points that I had at the start of the turn, I now have one and a half ether. Ether is used for my abilities. Uh, I can use it to attack with my hammer slam. I don't have enough to use my challenge ability, but that is enough that I can step up here and both do a couple points of damage here across these two Dreadblade Harrows that I'm fighting um, and also do some armor damage to the unit that I attacked directly with the hammer. This is an upgraded hammer called the Hammer of Rending. It lets me do armor damage, which is useful to reducing the amount of uh, the resistance that the stronger units have. Also going to take this opportunity to bring out my Castigator Squad. Uh, I'm going to risk putting them right next to my Celestin. 
I want to be able to put them onto this hill in the next turn. Um, because the Castigators can't move the turn they spawn, I have to be very conscious of when that, uh, when I do that. Okay, so a bunch of things have happened here. I'm going to move my castigators up the hill. Because I moved, I can't take advantage of the great bow shot uh, in this turn. Uh, there are skills that will allow you to do that, but I don't have one equipped. Uh, but I can use my indirect fire, and that's been upgraded with a, with a bonus range to it. Uh, and that's going to be useful because there's a bunch of these guys available to me to attack. Uh, I could take advantage of or take a stab at getting some of these ranged or these melee troops that are closing in on me. But I think I'm going to take advantage of this to do some damage to these chain rasp chain ghasts uh, that are going to be plinking away at me because they're less likely to move around. My hero, we're going to have to reposition my hero, I think. So we'll, we'll move over to here. Not too worried if the enemy take that lore jar. I am worried about getting pulled into these hazards. We move forward in the battle to go directly to another situation where we have to use our best strategy to defeat the opponent. Okay, this actually is a perfect setup. Uh, and now I have enough ether to, to do this. Um, so, we talked a bit about the Spirit Storm. Spirit Storm, we'll just get this going here and we'll cast it. It does area of effect damage. It also will do damage to anything moving in or out of it. And if you remember my knockback, I have the ability to do that. So I'm going to do knock that chain rasp into the spirit storm, do a little more damage to it. And we'll see if we can finish them off with our castigators. Now, they're, if they move out of that, they're dead. If they stay there, they'll die from the castigator shot. It's important to use the different skills of your uh, warband together. Even though I'm fighting at a disadvantage, I'm able to turn this around in my favor. Here, we'll pick up this chest. There's some nice items in that chest. It's purple. Polish off this chain ghast. OK, 
Okay. Got a Knight of Shrouds. It's level two. It's got a strong attack. I need to be quite careful against this. Uh, and in the next turn, the there's going to be a whole host of ghosts to support him as well. Uh, Ian, do you have any advice for this situation? Right this now? is a really good chance to stand on the spawn indicators and basically block the spawn and force those enemies to delay and spawn in a different X. Uh, or it's a chance to put an indirect fire down on the spawn hexes so that when they spawn, they're spawning in oppositions that are going to take damage. Or both of those things. All right. Well, none of my troops have the movement to be able to get to a, a spawn point because I already moved my that's great. My hero. So I'm going to take advantage of the ranged attack there. Um, I'm also going to knock this guy up against the wall. Doing it against the edge of the map doesn't do extra damage like it does against rocks or units, but it will keep him in the fire there, which helps bring him down a bit. Got a lot of units on the field now. So I need to be quite careful here because there's a lot of units that could do damage to me. Uh, and I've spent a lot of my skills, so the, the chances for me to... Um, crowd control this mess are, are quite limited. Let's see how this works out. I'm gonna bring them down there. We can... We can afford a hammer slam there. I think most of these troops are going to close in on my hero, so I'm going to try and fight that there. And I'm going to... I'm going to leave my encanter where she is because um, I don't want her to get killed in the next turn. It would definitely make her make a big difference if you can lose this Okay. So we do have a few options now. Uh, this is going to be... I got to be careful. So once again, I think Spirit Storm is a, is a good choice for us here. I can drop it directly on the Stripe Blade Harrows. That also means that in order for this Knight of Shrouds to move out of here, it's going to take damage. And... I'm not saying that won't happen, but... Gives me some choices. I'm going to try and bring my hero around here. There's hopefully something I can do if we survive these turns. Oh, we can knock him into a hazard. That's right. So... We have a couple opportunities available to us. Um, this might be a superior force for me to fight through, but fortunately the Knight of Shrouds has opened up a weak, weak spot here. Uh, my encanter should be able to knock him off, put him into the, the hazard, and because it's an assassination mission, we win. Um, 
The disadvantage of doing that is I don't earn all the experience I would have if I had killed the troops that were there. Um, but in this case, it lets me live to fight to the next mission. If you end up dying, you have to go all the way back to the beginning um, because it is a roguelike game. Uh, and that is something that uh, we want to avoid. <laughs> I've earned a Thunderlance skill. This is a this is a rare item available to me. Um, I can equip this on units like the Pal Paladors or the Prosecutors. I haven't unlocked any yet. Um, and I've also earned a Rare Spirit Flask and a Vengeance skill. This is another Prosecutor skill. That would have been a really good unit to field this, uh, this time around, but maybe they were in some of the earlier chests. And we've earned a new lore card. Then... It's up to you to learn how to create the best synergies with all these new war gear and abilities, and also explore Stormground's lore via the War Spoils menu. There are over 500 items to collect for great playstyle variety for each faction. Thanks for watching this gameplay of Age of Sigmar Stormground. We hope to see you on the battlefield when the game comes out on the 27th of May with crossplay between all platforms.